Good afternoon, all friends and family who have joined for 26th edition of Business Opportunity Over Chai webinar series, a platform through which Frenchers India every day is presenting one premium brand we are so proud of. We have privilege and we welcome our panelist, Chairman Frenchers India, Gaurav Sir, and our MD Sonia, ma'am, for this particular session. As usual, they will share their insights, their feedbacks, and their learning with each one of us. Brand of the day is A. MAB Aviations, and we have privilege to interact with founder and MD Mandar Sir and CEO Arvind Sir for this particular session. We welcome both of you for a great session. A great session ahead. Thank you so much. Over to you, sir. Over to you, Arvind Sir. Thank you so much yes. for joining us. Thanks. Uh, can you please pass on the controls to me? Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I hope you and your families are safe and healthy. Uh, I am Arvind Jadav, CEO of uh, MAB Aviation. And today in this uh, brand session, uh, jo joining with me are, uh, is Mandar, uh, the founder and managing director of MAB Aviation, and uh, Dr. Abhay, uh, who is our chief medical officer. Uh, so, I would like to quickly run you uh, through, uh, you know, MAB Aviation, uh, what we do, who we are, and uh, then uh, move on to the, the service offering uh, for the franchise partners. And there I would like to focus more uh, in detail uh, so that you all get uh, a first-hand uh, detailed information about what our proposition is. Uh, so about us, uh, MAB Aviation was uh, established in 2009 and is uh, one of the most reputed luxurious helicopter and airplane charter services in India. We are headquartered in Mumbai and we have a pan-India presence. Uh, we, we, you know, we have a wide range of services from you know, business uh, jets to helicopters to air ambulances. Uh, we have our own air operator permit. Uh, and now uh, we have uh, recently ventured into a full scale uh, air ambulance service uh, where we uh, kind of uh, are leveraging on our Im uh, immense uh, chartering experience. Uh, basically, uh, uh, the air ambulance business uh, that, that, that we are going to uh, talk about today uh, is, a, uh, is a very virgin market uh, in India. And as you all must be aware uh, that uh, the potential is almost untapped. Uh, so we want to set a footprint in the service space uh, uh, with, and, and we, we carry a very strong vision and uh, we, we certainly have a very strong uh, business plan in place. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are licensed to uh, fly. Uh, this is our uh, air operator permit. Uh, it uh, just to give you a background uh, to get an air operator permit, uh, you know, uh, normally uh, uh, an uh, uh, company takes not less than two and a half years. So it's a very long process. It's it is a tedious process, and we have successfully achieved uh, uh, getting our operator permit. Uh, this is our leadership team. Uh, we have Mandar, whom I have introduced you earlier. He is the managing director and founder of MAB Aviation. Uh, he has over 12 years of experience uh, and, uh, you know, he's, he's a great visionary. Uh, he's got a very uh, strong entrepreneurial mindset. And uh, he, he, he has a lot of, uh, you know, business concepts in terms of aviation up his sleeve. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's what drives uh, the aviation industry, uh, the, uh, the, the company that, uh, that we are. Uh, we have Yogesh, uh, who uh, is uh, a, a director uh, in the company. Uh, he has uh, good uh, years of experience. Uh, he ma basically manages the entire operations uh, and is, is an accountable manager. He holds a DGCA post of an accountable manager. Uh, that's me. Uh, I, I have... Uh, uh, yeah, I have more than 30 years of experience uh, in, in diverse roles and uh, diverse fields. Uh, I have recently joined uh, 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 MAP Aviation, which is uh, about a year back. And uh, so moving on to our core team, uh, 
uh, Captain Arpit, uh, he, he, he is he's the one who looks after our flight operations and he's our chief pilot. Uh, Pradeep uh, Kumar, he's the director of engineering. He carries a lot of experience with him, 39 years plus, and he, he holds a, a two DGCA post for a quality manager. Uh, Rohit Mali, uh, he is the continuing uh, airworthiness manager. Uh, he uh, he has uh, achieved uh, uh, to be uh, you know to be a, a cam at a very early age. So with six years of experience, he has done a fabulous job. Uh, Swapnil, uh, he is our chief security officer, and uh, he also manages all the flight operations uh, uh, for us. Uh, he's a very highly motivated person as well. Well, this is our brand, uh, Medical Flight. Uh, today, we are going to talk a lot about this. Uh, it's an air ambulance service, uh, uh, and uh, Medical Flight, as it says, uh, it's, it's, it's one of the first brand uh, that we are uh, going to launch in India as, as, as a pan-India presence. Uh, our basic mission is to build a professional and uh, affordable pan-India network of air ambulance fleet for every class of citizen to provide a reliable, efficient, and accessible patient transport service. So that's our mission. And uh, our vision is to make the medical flight uh, uh, brand India's first professional air ambulance business uh, covering every airport base within the country. So that's what we look forward to. Uh, interestingly, uh, if you look at our tagline, it's 99.99 uh, .99 is not equal to 100. So I think we are probably the only ones who have this uh, tagline, which, is, which speaks only in numbers. There are no words there. And we seriously mean it because, you know, we, we strive to achieve perfection. So it's that 0 0.01 is what we always want, you know, look forward to cover up. Uh, moving on. Uh, just to give you a quick uh, overview on the global statistics uh, regarding uh, the uh, uh, air ambulance service. So uh, the, the first uh, pie graph that you see, it's, it's a market share by an aircraft type. So there are only two types of aircraft, so which is fixed wing and rotary wing. So in a rotary wing, uh, you see the, the blue section, the dark blue section, uh, that's the, you know, that's this uh, kind of uh, uh, service offered by helicopters. And the, the uh, sky blue section is where it's fixed wing, uh, uh, you know, uh, air ambulance services. Uh, why you see more of helicopters is, uh, is uh, a press into the service is because of, uh, you know, worldwide emergency rescue operations take place. Accident victims are lifted from, you know, the, uh, highways. So the number of helicopters uh, involved in, in, in air ambulance service is more. Uh, also, if you see as indep independent or private players, uh, the, the, the global market is about half a billion uh, industry. So uh, it's, it's huge. Uh, and below you would see a trend uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, based on the rotary and the uh, fixed wing uh, aircrafts, uh, where you see that the growth is phenomenal. And by 2025, we are seeing a, a, a peak where, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's increasing at, at an alarming rate. Uh, so it, there is huge potential is what I would like to say. Uh, Key challenges uh, in the air ambulance space, uh, you know, there are, through our research and our practical experience, we have come across all the challenges and we have noted them down so that you guys, uh, you know, come to know as to uh, it, uh, what are the kind of challenges that exist in this particular uh, space. So no aviation company basically has a dedicated 24 by seven air ambulance service and it's a fact, okay? Uh, None have an all India reach and very few aircrafts are available in a ready to fly medical configuration uh, uh, condition. So there are no dedicated aircrafts that are, you know, medical configured ready. Uh, there is also a lack of uh, specialized trained staffs who, uh, you know, who understand the intricacies or, or the nuances of how to operate an air ambulance service. There is also a lot of scarcity of aircrafts. Uh, which uh, you know uh, uh, with, with in the medical uh, medical aviation sector, 
uh, which makes uh, you know uh, it a very unviable and an unaffordable kind of uh, uh, segment. The rejection rate, uh, if if I have to uh, mention, uh, it's through our our own experience. The rejection rate uh, has been out of ten inquiries that we receive per day. For example, we have to refuse nine inquiries because again. Uh, there are no aircrafts that are available to service these rest line or uh, maybe they are just you know through the chain they are just exorbitantly it becomes expensive uh, to and the customer then backs out there is basically a lack of institutional structure is uh, what we we have found there is a lot of inexperience involved uh, and that's the reason when you know uh, as 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 the the quote floats uh, it is, you know, it, it lands up to the customer with an exorbitant rate. Uh, most of the times it so happens that it takes at least 10 hours uh, to confirm that there is an aircraft that is available and also uh, to, you know, kind of uh, give a quote to a customer. And then by the time it is quite late uh, for the customer to take a decision. Moving on on the uh, key challenges, uh, there is one more uh, issue that uh, normally is faced. Uh, you know, uh, the local lo local presence. Uh, there is there, there. You know, we India is a is a diverse country. A lot of languages are involved. There is no one who can communicate in the local language and explain what the service is all about, and you know, uh, and and engage the customer to to take benefit of this service. Uh, also, there is uh, there is no availability or there is no mechanism that is in place which uh, which provides uh, you know kind of uh, a facility for patients or their families to pay uh, the money. So there is you know that I mean there are, in, in report, remote areas uh, there is no facility or knowledge uh, base where you know you can have online kind of payments done. The other uh, major challenge uh, is, you know, aircraft maintenance. So uh, keeping the aircraft in good flying condition is very, very important. And this is exactly what is lacking uh, with the unorganized operators in, in, in the country. Now, our key differentiators. So basically what, what you know, uh, this is, the, the differentiators or how we are different, uh, this gives us the first mover's edge. And that's where we want to, you know, capitalize on the medical aviation market. So what are these, these factors which, you know, we have tried to mitigate based on the challenges that I just spoke about. So air ambulance basically is an essential service. So the demand will never stop. Uh, we as MAB Aviation, uh, we are a very well organized uh, uh, company. We have a 24 by 7 operations and a pan India's pre presence for the air ambulance service. We have dedicated aircrafts uh, which are in, in medical configuration and we are always ready to fly anytime an inquiry or, or, or a flight is activated. We have a central command co control center which you know takes care of all customer inquiries as well as you know the flight execution schedule. Uh, we have a very highly experienced uh, you know team of crew, paramedics, and and of course the operations team who takes care of you know every aspect in the process end to end. Uh, we we follow very stringent uh, uh, SOPs uh, for aircraft maintenance. So all this uh, the daily checks, which is called the C checks, uh, all the the schedule checks and any repairs, uh, they're all, you know, followed with very, very strict controls and quality control. Uh, the best part is uh, this particular business model, it's, a, it's, it's based on a 100% advance payment. So there is no, no question of any, you know, bad debts. Uh, what I mean is any inquiry that comes to us, if, if, if the deal structure, if the deal is finalized, the flight is never activated until unless we receive 100 percent payment. So the payment is assured, and then we deal with the service. Uh, 
just to just to make a mention, uh, the air ambulance project, uh, uh, you know, we 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 was it was announced in the Make in India event uh, about a couple you know a couple of years ago, and it it kind of was very much appreciated uh, by the then uh, chief minister, and uh, the concept uh, has kind of you know already become a talk of the town. Well, these are uh, basically our six pillar of strengths. Uh, we we strongly believe in you know the seal of trust. That's what we offer. Uh, it's 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 an entirely reliable and you know superior standards that that we maintain at all times. And uh, the second part, uh, the strength is our customer support, uh, which we feel you know is is our strength uh, because it's a twenty four by customer service support and. Uh, uh, it, 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 you know, the response times are, are very quick. Uh, you would, just to give you an example, if an inquiry comes to us uh, for, for, you know, for a quotation, we send the quotation in flat four minutes. That's, that's the average time. So we, you know, there's no waiting. Similarly, any other kind of customer server, you know, support services are looked after or attended to very quickly. Uh, we are, uh, you know, we, we are a professional and a reliable organization. Uh, we follow uh, every aspect uh, of safety and comfort. Uh, safety is very important in this, in the, in the aviation sector. So we are very, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, conscious about that. Uh, we, we believe in offering on-time service, uh, of course, barring certain, uh, you know, uh, instances where it is beyond our control, uh, but we get back to you uh, or, or the customer where, you know, uh, they are informed that there are going to be delays. And so, the, so, so the communication is, is always there. And the sixth trend that we, we have is our expert team, a team of, you know, the, the crew, uh, the operations team and the team of uh, doctors and paramedics. This is our business model. Uh, you know, the, the, the medical flight uh, business model is something that I want to uh, kind of uh, present to you. Uh, medical flight, as I mentioned, is, is our air ambulance brand. Uh, currently, we have two aircrafts that are in service, and uh, we, are, we have already uh, booked two CJ2 jets, uh, which are in the process of uh, induction. And uh, we, we hope that uh, by, by the end of June, we should have them on board. Uh, so basically, this is our this is our vision. You know, we we visualize that we want to have uh, uh, you know aircrafts, at least ten medically configured aircrafts in every five hundred kilometers across the, you know, the the span of India, so that we can cater to every uh, you know uh, corner of of the country. So that's what we we uh, are visualizing. And this is, of course, we're going to try and achieve this in a phased manner. We have, we are, like I said, we are already on it. We are inducting two aircrafts more, and over the period of two years, we should at least have ten plus aircrafts stationed, deployed in different areas of the country, so that it's easier for for the connect and for offering the service. Uh, we we already have a twenty four by seven uh, call center setup, uh, which uh, takes care of all the uh, customer requests. Uh, we we basically uh, you know want to develop and build a, a strong franchisee network effectively, which would cover all airport bases across the country. So wherever there is an airport in the country, from my understanding, there are closer to three hundred airports. So what we want to do is is capture the entire or promote our air ambulance brand in the region where there is an airport. So that's where we want to have the franchising model or the network created at every airport base. And that's, that's our, our objective, our key objective, where the, 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 the air ambulance service will be promoted. Uh, we also uh, are, are looking forward to, uh, or, or rather are in the process of uh, uh, doing uh, strong tie-ups with hospitals uh, across India so that we have uh, you know, uh, specialist, the medical specialist already ready 
you know whenever there's a need if if in a particular region some you know we need to deploy the the uh, medical team uh, they they are available because we already have contracts back to back with them and uh, as a futuristic uh, uh, you know uh, idea or or uh, uh, another product that we would want to eventually get into is an insurance based service uh, which would be offered to all the people in the country which is the next business idea is what we look at all right uh, as we all are aware uh, covid 19 uh, is is the new normal uh, we cannot uh, escape from it uh, it's here to stay for a very long time and we we will have to learn to live with it uh, at least for the next few years uh, having said that during this lockdown it's been almost plus 60 plus days now we uh, you know all all the other airlines were grounded but we as mab aviation were doing a lot of flying they were extremely busy flying all medical patients which are non covid of course across the country uh all types of patients you know cancer patients who who needed chemotherapies the, the facility was not available at their at, at their local place surgeries planned surgeries sudden surgeries uh, post surgery recoveries so we have uh, you know uh, patients who have already undergone surgeries and now they want to you know just go through recoveries so they want to go from mumbai to say uh, jaipur uh, they're, they're resident of jaipur so so that transport so it is a uh, sitting patient transport pregnant women uh, also newborn babies uh, critical care so a lot of lot of various types of non covid patients we have served and we continue to serve each day uh having said that uh, one of the thoughts uh, that that we strongly feel is you know in in the current uh, covid era uh, uh, the non covid patients would be facing a lot of you know distress uh, because uh, the entire focus is going to be on uh, covid covid 19 and so people with other uh, you know uh, treatment uh, required uh, requirements where they they you know like i said surgeries or heart attacks or it could be cancer chemotherapy whatever it is people uh, in that segment they are huge if if we really see but they would be in 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 a neglected stage for the for the next coming months or years uh, so that's where we we think you know we are going to play a major role because uh, if they want to travel for for better treatment better healthcare facilities uh, they are going to be extremely cautious now uh, to travel by land or you know by train uh, crowd they they wouldn't want to get into a crowded place uh, or or travel uh, you know with the crowd so i think the air ambulance they would prefer to take an air ambulance going forward and hence uh, you know in tier 1 tier 2 cities uh this this is going to be a very high potential uh you know uh they are going to carry out a high potential in terms of using the air ambulance service including uh, the remote areas as well okay uh need for a franchise partner why why we want to get our our, our develop the franchise network uh, so basically like i mentioned earlier we want to reach out to every airport base in the country and we want to have our promote you know our presence there uh so we we are we have completely planned ourselves we are ready for for franchising and you know we are ready to serve uh your your regions your respective regions for whatever sales or leads that you would create from those regions uh we basically want to bring about a very big change in terms of you know uh, uh, uh being the first movers of our brand in the country uh, to onboard franchise partners so that's that's it's it's something unique it's the first time it's happening uh, in our country and we want to be the you know the the first to be doing that and capture the entire aero medical transport market uh we have developed a lot of goodwill uh, uh, over the years uh, of our brand and uh, now that's exactly what we want to do uh promoted and reach out to new locations um like i 
mentioned earlier as well, uh, you know, the trend, is, it's, it's a surging trend. The demand potential is very high. And, uh, you know, so this is an opportunity for us to generate additional revenue and income, uh, you know, uh, by leveraging or taking uh, advantage of uh, the requirement or the demand in terms of uh, air ambulance uh, service. Uh, people would definitely now look forward to it. Uh, the offer that we have is basically it's a very low investment uh, scheme and uh, it will generate a lot of revenue and growth. It has it has a very high growth potential. Um, all that you have to do is you know just promote and 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 you know promote the the service or the brand in your local uh, area, and if, which will be of course an exclusive region. Uh, and just generate the leads and the sales, and you make money. Uh, typically, how would this work? How would the franchise partner role work? Uh, so, you know, this is the value chain of, of the air ambulance service at a very high level. Uh, the regional marketing is something that you, you know, the franchise partner would be doing. Uh, they have to get in touch with hospitals, doctors, you know, so, so wherever there's an airport, that would be an, that you, that would be your region. Uh, the periphery would be defined as, as, you know, as, as we go region by region and you need to promote your product, uh, you know, with the hospitals and doctors, generate leads, get a sales quote from us. So whatever is in blue is, is with the company, whatever is in black is, is the role of uh, the franchise partner. Uh, so once you get a sales quote from us, you finalize the deal. Uh, flight coordination is done by us. Flight is activated and the air, air, air ambulance flight is executed. So the first three or rather two and a half uh, elements of the process is something that uh, you know, the, the franchise partner will uh, have to be responsible for. Uh, as support from our company, you know, this is the kind of partner support that we would be offering uh, to our franchise partners, uh, service portfolio, of course, and uh, marketing and customer pull support. So that's something where we would, you know, kind of give a, you know, a, a backing uh, for you to, to kind of, you know, do a customer pull support, uh, call center and technology support, uh, training and development. So we will, we will initially give you a complete detail orientation program. Uh, you know, make you go through it. Uh, it's a very simple model. So nothing very, you know, uh, uh, out of the world kind of uh, efforts. Uh, but uh, so the training is going to be simple. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very straightforward uh, thing. Uh, we would also give uh, franchisees uh, a certification uh, that you are, are a franchisee. Uh, and of course, digital marketing support, which will work, uh, you know, to promote the uh, or, or boost in promoting uh, the product and the service. Uh, I would like to spend some uh, some uh, detailed time on this particular slide. Uh, it's basically the proposal uh, that we want to make uh, to our franchise partners. So uh, it's a very low cost opportunity. Uh, actually, you 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 spend or or you need to invest uh, two lakh rupees. Uh, what are the uh, uh, franchise partner requirements? So. It's basically the, the franchise partner needs to be available 24 by seven, uh, needs to carry a smartphone, of course, uh, we all have them now. Uh, they will get an exclusive region to operate. Uh, of course, that exclusivity will remain based on, uh, you know, the, the targets that have been set. And they are very, very achievable and realistic tar targets. And uh, uh, so as long as those targets are met, uh, the exclusivity remains uh, or else, uh, you know, uh, there would be discussions with the partner on how to uh, try and help them get the targets or maybe uh, introduce someone else as well. So that's being very clear. Uh, you can work from home. Uh, there's no office required. Uh, you know, you can do any other businesses that you are already into or, you know, go in for new businesses or if you're, you know, you're, you're working or you're in a job, uh, you, you, you continue with that. So it's, it's, it's an additional income opportunity. Uh, you, you, you can do the, the promotion, the brand promotion on your own, or you can, you know, even if you feel you, you, want, you want to appoint a staff, but you'll have to do that at your own expense. Uh, 
and you know the other expense would be the marketing collaterals and travel expense uh, that would be the, the additional investment that you will have to do on an ongoing basis the, you know meeting the hospitals going to the doctors all of that or you know the coordination airport if there is a flight activated so you will have to be kind of uh, you know a helping hand in doing the coordination uh, rest everything of course we will do but your your presence is, it would be very valuable for your particular flights uh, so coming to uh, the total investment, uh, the total investment is about seven lakhs, uh, which is in a breakup of five lakhs and two lakhs. Uh, the five lakh element is basically a refundable uh, security deposit. So the, the sec this is a security deposit that we'll be taking from the every uh, franchise partner. Uh, it, you know, when, when the contract ends or, you know, if any, any parties wish to uh, terminate the contract, uh, it will be refunded back uh, to the uh, uh, investor, uh, but without the interest. Uh, the reason we want to take uh, the security deposit is because, like I mentioned earlier, uh, our flights uh, or, or our business model operates on 100% payment. Uh, so most of the times what is going to happen is you're going to be the front end person, uh, the, the, the client or the customer, the, your, your sales lead are going to pay you up front. Uh, it could be in cash, it could be a, a, a direct transfer to your bank. And um, in case it is in cash, so a direct transfer can happen to our account as well. But in case it's 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 in cash, then it's just uh, you know to protect the customer. Uh, this is the security deposit that we would like to uh, you know retain at our end. Uh, franchise fee is of two lakh rupees. Uh, this is a non a non refundable fee. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see the bottom side of the uh, slide, <coughs> but there are two two elements. Uh, the uh, you know, the the sales fees or your commission uh, if it is a direct sale so if you generate the lead and give us the sales then we pay seven percent on the sales value so the entire invoice that is generated and if it is an indirect lead we still want you to earn money and what we want you to do is uh, you know if, if it uh, directly it says say from our website or if it comes from any other source from your region then we would like to uh, route the sales query, the, the sales inquiry to you. And in that case, you will be paid three and a half percent. So it is it is a win-win in, in that situation as well. So we want to look after our uh, franchise partners uh, very well. So if an inquiry comes from their region, their respective region, it will be still, you will be part of that uh, deal. Uh, like I mentioned, if it is directly from you, you will get 7%. If it's an indirect sales, it will be three and a half percent. I hope I'm clear uh, in explaining this. Financial projections. Uh, average uh, revenue, if I consider, uh, you know, per flight uh, as, as, as five and a half lakhs, uh, if that's the average that I, you know, we normally uh, make flights of three and a half lakhs, can go right up to 16 and 18 lakhs depending so so the flight or the revenue per flight depends completely on on the sector of of uh, travel so if it is a mumbai goa flight probably it will be three three and a half lakhs uh, if it is a mumbai guwahati flight for the transfer patient transfer or the other way around uh, it can even go to a very very high number so average what i'm saying is you know i've considered uh, as five and a half lakhs uh, as as the revenue the calculations that I'm going to present to you uh, in, in the financial uh, projections is, is, are done at a very, very conservative level. Uh, so this is the bare minimum that we feel we, you, you can certainly achieve this. Each uh, you know, uh, franchise partner who, who is associated with this will, will definitely be able to achieve this. So uh, year one, uh, if you see, uh, what I considered is, is an increase of 50,000 of, of revenue per flight year on year. So year one is five and a half lakhs. Second year you'll see is six lakhs and so on and so forth. Uh, the annual growth rate is at 10%. So 18 flights. So in the first year, if you look at the, at the, at the third uh, uh, table, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four is, is just a gradual increase of sales that I've considered per franchise, uh, per uh, franchise partner. Initially, maybe in the first quarter, you may, you know, since it's a new thing, you, 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 you would, uh, 
take you know probably get just two sales second quarter four so that's the assumption and so over a period of one year the first year it would if if i say that 18 flights which i think is is at a very conservative level is what i'm presenting uh, so that's those are the the revenue numbers that that you see on your screen on the income calculation uh, the project cost basically the franchise fee like i mentioned is is 2 lakhs plus gst so it's 2 lakh 36000 the working capital that you would require is security deposit refundable which is 5 lakhs initial marketing expense of 25000 is is you know for your collaterals or whatever that you would you would need so 25000 rupees so total to a final uh, uh, 5 lakh 25000 um, speaking of the income projections, so like I mentioned, the direct sales seven percent, indirect sales three and a half. You'll still get that. Uh, year one, uh, that is what uh, are the numbers. Uh, average monthly revenue that I see in year one is about fifty-five thousand. If you achieve uh, a, a you know a simple target as eighteen, you know anywhere about sixteen to eighteen flights uh, in a year, and I think that's very very conservative. And achievable. Uh, speaking of uh, the uh, uh, return on investment and the profitability, so uh, the income statement, the, the you know uh, the revenue sales, direct sales, and the indirect sales uh, uh, is, is out there. Uh, expenses uh, I have added miscellaneous per per month expense of fifteen thousand. You know which includes probably your travel. You know, it could be your car, fuel, whatever it is, or maybe you know you may appoint uh, someone to help you as a helping hand to you know promote the the product. So fifteen thousand a month, uh, that's the expense I have considered, uh, and the franchise fee. So speaking of that, uh, the the ROI numbers you can see for yourself and the cumulative ROI numbers, uh, the payback period that that we feel is about seven months for you to recover your money, your investment, uh, your direct investment rather. So this is, I think, uh, very much achievable. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's realistic. You probably, if you do more sales, seven months can come down as well. Uh, it's just uh, on, on the performance of how, how you, you know, uh, go about your performance and your numbers, sales numbers. Uh, we are always in the news for the good reasons, and uh, you know we have done a lot of uh, air ambulance uh, transfers. Uh, we have done a lot of organ transfers. So these are just few of the testimonials, uh, and uh, that's that's about it. So I hope uh, you have enjoyed the session, and uh, uh, let's move on to the Q and A section. Uh, thank you. Thanks, thanks, uh, Arvind. This is uh, very helpful for all our uh, listeners uh, and our audience. Uh, you know, you rightly said that uh, the whole air ambulance business is very nascent in India. It's very mature in other parts of the world, especially in US and uh, Europe. Uh, it's very, very prevalent. Uh, rather, a lot of uh, healthcare brands have their own uh, private. Uh, you know, uh, capabilities which they build helicopters and jets and so on and so forth, and a lot happens there, and it is it's it's kind of a, a full blown industry. India, uh, for various reasons, this has never been done. One, I think, there was no specialized uh, company operating it, then lack of infrastructure, and then also alignment with the healthcare facilities uh, was not there. And uh, now, I mean, we, we all talk about. Uh, you know the connectivity India has. India has 220 airports, and one of the largest uh, airport penetration in the in the world. Uh, it looks like that we don't have, but now I think with the the new uh, making uh, airports inclusive, so I think there are multiple other airports also available. So it connects India very well. So even what you said that you will start with 10 jets, and even if this is an opportunity goes to 100 jets or 100 different crafts. I think there's a bigger opportunity available. <clears throat> so before we we get into uh, you know the the discussion, I would like to take up a few points and 
and if you can because our audience is asking a lot of questions and uh, this forum we have created to have a uh, strong discussions in terms of a business model so that uh, whoever is looking to invest in a business model like this has more clarity and understands the business in detail so my first question is really about the business model itself i mean let's go deeper in the business model and try to understand the what is an opportunity size and how uh, you have done some analytics where you know that there is overall demand size is what and currently who is servicing that demand and if it is not servicing what is the alternative patients are using uh, currently so what i my question is that how many daily flights uh, people would have to take uh, for if this availability of all your jets infrastructure is available what is an opportunity size uh, available and how currently it is addressed so uh, i would suggest mandar uh, would you like to take uh, take this yeah yeah thank you see uh, as arvin mentioned in his presentation we are getting 10 calls every day and we are only managing to serve one call because of we are new we have recently started inducting the aircrafts and by the way there is no whatsoever marketing which is available in any part of india so considering all these things we know that there is a business we are inducting aircraft so aggressively means so i want to bring it to your notice that all the businesses they are sitting back they are defensive and we are the only one who are aggressively buying aircrafts and uh, coming forward with a very aggressive plan because demand is uh, there uh, so uh, first thing is we need these franchise partners because this demand is from across india even a small tier two cities tier three cities we are getting calls every day and i uh, i saw a couple of questions which are there in the um, people which ask these questions try to understand there are uh, as you rightly mentioned 280 there are official airports available then there are military airports there are private airports so practically we have selected the aircraft which can practically land on all the airports air strips available in india so the number is almost every district place we have one air strip and we are getting inquiries from there we are operating on those small air air strips lifting the patient and bringing it to a better medical facility so uh, uh, there are about 300 uh, airports presently available for uh, medical flights so yeah that's the thing so very helpful and uh, and and now my second question really moves in because if the demand is much higher than what you are able to fulfill uh is it because of your lesser capacity being available today or or uh you know or or you have a last mile connectivity issue pricing issue and so on so forth. why why this demand which has been available has not been seen by any other operator in the market uh because uh, this is a high ticket product and and private charter itself is a very high ticket product uh and has a high margin product and uh, so where do you think why it is not been uh currently run my question first second question is if you can because this is a per aircraft uh, throughput so what is a aircraft uh, throughput in a month basis so which means that a single aircraft can do how many round trips uh and what you would say that is an optimum performance of per aircraft uh well optimum performance per aircraft is somewhere two and a half charter every day so uh see to cover about 80 chart to to uh, support uh, 80 flights is something which is easily achievable target so uh, we are our all the projections are based on to this is a first milestone to support to serve 80 uh, patients per aircraft per month that is that is the that is the target if i take a conservative structure and say take per aircraft 50 because the business would grow and you have currently two and you getting two more and would have been maybe capacity of four craft so you can easily say that about 200 uh, patient uh, round trip capacity you would have been built over next two to three months and so our audience should understand that uh, you, in two months time you will be ready to service that kind of size so everybody if he, if if somebody starts multiple franchises in the market so there would be a capability for you to service that correct correct that's my correct. another question if uh, uh, is uh, 
do you see that analysis because the cities can be very different and we're getting inquiries from people writing from chennai they're writing for pune they're writing for hyderabad and they're also writing for very tier 2 tier 3 cities now in your model it's an exclusive model for uh, uh, you know airport you have one franchisee uh, so and it would shift because the uh, person in chennai might get a bigger business or bigger opportunity Uh, both by affordability, by the size of market, and versus a, a Rajkot, uh, which is a smaller city and might not be able to uh, get that kind of number. So, what is what is your parameters on that? No businesses are available uh, in both the cities. Means Chennai people, they they will get a basically a business where there are incoming patients, whereas Rajkot you will find where there are outgoing patients. Uh, from uh, uh, rajkot hospital to maybe a chennai mumbai or a delhi hospital so the moment is both way number 1 number 2 is our experience so far is uh, a more business is at uh, smaller uh, cities where uh, uh, you know people want to go from uh, uh, local hospitals to more advanced hospitals so uh, it's not that uh, the opportunity is only for uh, big cities basically the opportunity the better opportunity is there for a smaller city so to establish as a franchisee in a tier 2 city is more easy than to establish it in a bigger cities so now uh, my final question on the business model is uh, you know so it, the acquisition of the patient normally would happen from either a smaller hospital or a doctor who recommends that or sometimes it is through your marketing but marketing would not work because whenever you feel that you need you are in some form of emergency and you were with the physician who would then advise you say this is a time for you to take a specialist opinion or would need to take a flight now any time a medical professional or a hospital or anybody recommends they also have their own commissions uh, so they work on allied services whatever services are allied for them Uh, even today, uh, a lot of other services are lied to these, uh, you know, uh, hospitals. They have their own commission. They what I call the acquisition cost. So now, if a franchisee gets seven percent, and he has to part some part of that to already to to the to the doctor or the uh, the hospital, then it's nothing would be left for him because uh, the business model is even if you do from I've seen your projection while it is a very conservative projection, you've taken one point five. Uh, cases in a month to about as a two cases or 2.5 cases kind of a throughput. Out of two cases, uh, 1.5 case means uh, uh, average billing would be six seven lakh rupees, and somebody said a calculation seven percent of that uh, would become a certain number, which means seventy eighty thousand rupees, maybe sixty seventy thousand rupees. And out of that, you have to do some marketing, you have some direct costs, and you have to give commission. So it's a very little left. Uh, and uh, and I understand your point that you have kept. Five lakh rupees as a as a deposit because you want to make sure that if somebody on your behalf picks up money and doesn't do the service, you have a risk. Uh, but I think from an investor viewpoint also, he counts that as an investment because that money is blocked; it's not earning money for him. So either we we do something on that five lakh rupees to bring that value up, then people can quickly convert, and we can create some other instrument to get uh, deposit. And if it is, uh, then. how do we address this situation of these commissions which are being given in the market so that the business model can become a little more attractive uh, for a franchisee and if it is able to scale then obviously there is a much bigger opportunity for all of us see whatever we have projected as uh, uh, arvin rightly said it is basically uh, the worst case scenario let me tell you a small city is like raipur okay they are sending a, see we don't have any representation there we don't have any marketing no tie up nothing we are getting we are executing rather 10 flights a month we don't have any representation they are coming through us through websites and everything a small city like raigad again which is there in uh, uh, in chatisgarh uh, we are getting we are executing a one flight a week to that destination so the thing is uh whatever projections we have given it is something which even if you don't if you are not performing what you are going to earn out of this project that's number one number two is you are not calculating a major thing if we decide that this is a franchisee say for a raigad 
we are already serving there for four uh, serving four times a month without any marketing if you started putting if someone putting efforts serious efforts to reach up to 8 to 10 patients in a first or second month is very very easy so um if you ask me and uh, it is not there in a presentation and we always prefer to be very very conservative while giving any commitment the entire business model is based on to a very very small franchisee who is giving us a service let's say from orissa or from chatisgarh or from uh, west bengal should earn at least 3 lakh rupees a month the entire projection is based on that and 3 lakh rupees will be his his uh, apart from all his expenses this is something which we are targeting that he should earn and there is a potential almost in all the airports there is a potential and is there a commission available for these doctors and uh, uh, hospitals see the simple thing is the 7% uh, see there is one advantage you try to understand the first advantage is there will be only one mrp it always we always experience it that people the, the client who my franchisee convinced then somewhere he will google come to us and then say okay can you give us a quote so first is we are not changing our quote whosoever is calling so that there will be one mrp second is 7% that is about say it's a charter value say 5 uh, lakh rupees if is a charter value there is a good amount is already available with him see i cannot assess that what uh, doctors are expecting i cannot assess that what hospitals are expecting that's the reason we want a franchisee who can assess that uh, how to accommodate in that and that is enough is what is uh, our experience that is really enough sure so uh, two more questions and then i'll pass to somia uh, one is uh, which are the main hospitals you've tied up with today because uh, and where do you see because people move for critical illness and pay that kind of money especially in india is any big healthcare companies you've already tied up like apollo or uh, uh, you know any other uh, big brands which are inviting and that's one part second is there health insurance coverage in this is any health insurances are covering this cost as our partial cost on that and third is is this uh, also international piece available because a lot of people go for and especially middle east wants to now come to india or other parts because we have also a lot of franchises might be interested in other sectors bangladesh is sending a lot of patients to india uh, and nepal is sending a lot of patients to india is this also available yeah so number one is uh see try to understand we have engaged the hospitals if at all we need a medical help from them as far as the marketing part is concerned we are giving a full freedom only to our franchises so if there is a apollo hospital available in any city and my 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 franchises are getting business from apollo hospital it will be a business through our franchise not through apollo hospital so as far as the marketing is concerned it is our policy decision that we are not going to get any hospital on board to number 1 so these uh, the, the regions which we are discussing from there we are only going to accept the business through our franchises so i think that is a clear thing so it's not that that a franchise is there and hospital marketing separately or uh, uh, because that that's a big brand so they they will get a uh, additional benefit no we have not engaged any hospital as far as the patients uh, are concerned so uh, let me clear it uh, loud and clear so we, we might get uh, so there will be instances that we might get a medical team from hospital but a business will be routed through our franchise partners one second is as far as the insurance is concerned our talks are in in a final stage and we are we, we are negotiated very well negotiated and we are going to announce very soon that in, there will be a special insurance packages we will market it through our franchisee partners only and they will have a extra advantage on a rate premiums and everything that uh, uh, there will be a cashless insurance given by a reputed insurance companies executed by medical flight so but uh, that will be an additional business opportunity available to all our franchises partner very soon that there will be a insurance packages they can uh, sell it into a open market third is international flights uh, these citation jets they are there because uh, they are good to cover 
to bring patient from gulf from nepal from dhaka from kuwait iran iraq and all that part we are parallelly working uh, on those lines and uh, very soon uh, we will have all the permits to operate and accept international patients which is very helpful very very helpful i think that's a huge opportunity and i don't know why india has never unlocked that opportunity of medical tourism we can be the one of the largest hubs uh, especially for middle east africa uh, uh, parts of asian southeast asia india can really be uh, uh, working on that so i would like now to invite now sonia to take up her her questions and her remark on the industry and the category thank you so much uh, mandaji for your insights and thank you so much uh, arvind ji i think these were uh, very wonderful insights that you gave overall on the industry and and your business model in uh, specific and uh, i personally feel the technological advancement that healthcare has made in the last few years uh, along uh, with a big interest today which is coming from the patients they're inclined towards faster and very efficient uh, modes of transportation are driving this particular industry and we also see this uh, very well integrated in the modern healthcare system that today we are living in and uh, very important for time deprived patients and more for the treatments i would say which are both emergency treatments and a lot of elective treatments today uh, which would start happening which people have put on hold for the last two or three odd months and we see that in all the uh, reports uh, which have started coming especially post uh, uh, lockdown uh, uh, my my first question to you would be on the competition you know we we know there are not many players today in the industry there are very few who are operating in this segment uh, this month itself i i read about one of uh, the competitors in bombay itself this is book air ambulance uh, which is flap aviation they've launched a program which is also cashless air ambulance services uh, they claim to be the first ones to launch that and we also saw spice jet the spice care which have launched at a very competitive prices of 95000 uh, per hour kind of services uh, for the patients who want to uh, look at taking these services uh, so how competitive uh, we are at, at this point in time and what is our uh, i would say added advantage or value proposition uh, for a end uh, customer to look at services uh, from map see uh you mentioned two brands so let me assure you one thing that none of the brand have their own air ambulances or none of them have a uh, uh, their license to operate so we are serving both the brands they are uh, taking uh, they are hiring us to serve their patients so that's a, that's that's something which uh, i want to bring to your notice second is as far as that membership uh, program is concerned uh see there are many internet jokers available and we are also competing with uh, those jokers and sorry to use these uh, these words uh this membership program and everything it's completely illegal you cannot do that you are not allowed the best uh, uh legal advisors uh, they are against it so this is something like uh, the schemes and whatever they are floated on a market it's something that uh, they will be there for next couple of days and uh, will be vanished uh, i can i can assure you so third is competition uh, yes we are eagerly waiting for a serious player who really want to come with a good business plan and who really want to serve their patients there are about to let me be very frank with you there are about 67 online uh, companies already there selling air ambulance projects you you do it you ask them what is their call signs what is the aircraft what is the doctor's professions and then most of them they will simply stop accepting your calls so i don't want to comment more on that rather this is something which is a triggering point to, for us when we came to know that uh, there are only agents there are only people uh, there are many stories already available uh, on google that there are many companies they came forward they booked the air got the money and then they simply vanished and service was not there so that is something where we found an opportunity there is a big space for serious players and you take my word uh, as of now there might be only a one or a two who are at least planning to go um, ahead with a serious uh, business plans and uh, as a 
uh, Arvind mentioned earlier, it's a two and a half hours. You, you need a two and a half years to get your basic license. So our nearest competitor is two and a half years away yeah. from us. And as far as the spice jet is concerned, as I told you, yeah, we are serving them. So. Okay, Mangaj, I think that's very uh, helpful. The other is on the pricing. You know, you would have more understanding. Uh, is that pricing very competitive? Uh, you know, uh, because uh, we did saw in the newspapers, price it is offering ninety five thousand per hour uh, against uh, the services, which is an average of three point five lakhs that we talked about in the presentation. So, how competitive these services are? I, I can understand even the long term. You know, you being a, a vintage player. You will have an edge, uh, but for an immediate need and uh, from the cost perspective, as this is a very high, uh, a very expensive services, don't you think consumers will look at also the price uh, point of it before they take a decision? Okay, so two things. I saw a couple of questions there uh, that whether it is affordable to middle class. Many of them they are asking this. Second yeah. is means what's the price? Okay, so let me give you two examples. First is. And uh, all uh, the franchises who are listening, probable franchises who are listening, our service is that there are five crore people already there in India. Okay, they don't need any uh, insurance support, any cashless things. Whenever there is an emergency, they will simply pay from their own pocket and then buy a service from us, which might be in a range of eight to twelve crore, eight to twelve lakh rupees per transfer. So that number is five crore. They don't need any support. They don't want to go for a loan. They don't want insurance company. Nothing. They will simply buy it at in the price range of eight to twelve lakh rupees. That is market number one. Market number two is see, and everyone will agree to us. See, what we are targeting, and Arvind is also mentioned. We are targeting middle class people, and the, and we always keep on say telling. that those who are in a middle class or a lower middle class when they, there are only two incidences if there is a marriage in a home or if there is a medical emergency they act as if they are hnis so whether i have money or not and if i am a middle class that's a different story but then my brother help me my relatives help me and i act as a hnis so that number is a 15 crore so the market size which is readily available in india today is 20 crore individuals and uh, they don't need insurance they don't need any help from anyone either on their own or with their uh, relatives and friend they are able to afford this service so uh, those who are asking questions who will buy it let me tell you none of the insurance company is giving a single rupee today to them none of the insurance company is covering those expenses and they are still buying the service and aircrafts are not available that's the reason we are coming very very aggressively and uh, inducting uh, aircrafts by the way just for uh, information who, who are listening corporate jets flying vips and we are in that business so i know uh, that very well corporate jets flying vips corporate jets flying celebrities they are in a selling mode and the company is like my company we are aggressive mode and we are inducting aircrafts so try to understand things are changing things most of them they have already changed demand is there and we are only trying to respond to the existing demand so uh, i don't see uh, to worry about whether we will get and um, there is a market there is a market in small cities there is a market uh, with rural rich people and it is available maybe uh, none of uh, uh, my competitor fortunately explored it till date so very helpful mandaji very important stats that you have shared and i saw a lot of questions pertaining to the cost uh, uh, so to say uh, now you know one of the uh, statements that you made that brings me to my second question you talked about lot of tier uh, two cities where the demand is coming and we have seen especially in these 60 days uh, because the bigger cities like delhi bombay hyderabad bangalore they have a good healthcare structure infrastructure available and and we have seen bigger demand coming from uh, smaller cities uh, uh, my my two questions uh, as far as this is concerned first is uh, which locations of the cities today that you see which are uh, the priorities for you to open where you currently see a big demand coming in and which you are not able to service at this point in time 
Uh, my second question is on the kind of treatments. For example, a city like Bombay is a center for cancer. A city like Hyderabad, we see uh, liver patients going. City like Delhi, we have a lot of incoming uh, heart patients. So when we look at uh, these statistics, you know, which are the kind of, uh, you know, from from a associate perspective, uh, one is tied with the hospitals, and the other is the kind of treatments uh, which require a bigger inflow of patient to maybe these uh, uh, cities or states. So, so what is your viewpoint on this? Okay, before uh, uh, involving uh, Dr. Abhay, uh, uh, let me uh, tell you a couple of things on that. See, this is most of the transportations they, which is happening between the cities is a transportation for convenience. And it's a huge, it's a huge. So most of the time means we are, we are catering to a patients uh, between Mumbai and we are flying them between Mumbai and Chennai or Mumbai and Hyderabad or Mumbai and Delhi. All these cities, they have a very good medical infrastructure already available. But then they are using these services for convenience. Means they are staying in a city, lot of people are traveling and something goes wrong when they are traveling then they bring them by air ambulance one second is so all those states where medical infrastructure is not available or uh, the people think that okay for cancer let's go to mumbai for patients for uh, organ let's go to chennai then this is a transportation and it is happening from uh, let us say chhattisgarh yes a lot of transportation is happening karnataka a lot of happening even a Goa, a lot, a small uh, state like Goa, a lot of transport is happening. So that is number one. Number two is, uh, uh, I think we forgot to uh, bring it to your notice. Why we need ten aircrafts when my one aircraft is capable enough to do Chennai to Srinagar? Then why we are inducting aircraft and keeping it on every five hundred kilometers? Let 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 please understand. What is uh, what is happening? If we get an inquiry to transport a patient from Bangalore to Chennai, the charter cost, actual, if the aircraft is parked at Bangalore, the charter cost is not less than three and a half lakh rupees. Please understand. It's a three yeah. and a half lakh rupees. Now you will come to know this. It is very affordable. But what is happening? Aircrafts are not available there. So aircrafts all the way are going either from Mumbai or all the way from Delhi. A lot of uh, ferry cost uh, we are adding to that transport and then it is ultimately 10 lakh rupees and anyway people are paying. So the moment we, uh, why we are creating this momentum to put aircraft on every 500 kilometers, that will substantially reduce the charter cost. Why we need 10 aircraft? We, to reduce that, uh, so uh, for us the simple logic is, if we, right now the average is between 5.5 lakh to 7 lakh rupees. If we bring it down to three and a half lakh or two and a half lakh rupees, the market size will be five times of whatever is the existing uh, market size. So the entire effort, so uh, I, I want to take you to our vision, the entire effort to make it affordable to a middle class. That's true that only uh, higher middle class people are presently paying and affording this service, but very soon uh, you know, we will be at that stage. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, when we have a fleet, when we have a fleet, and we, 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 have, we already have four aircraft. So very important point that you made. Uh, if you are, uh, you know, because you you've been doing this for long. If you see, especially the last uh, two odd months, and otherwise also, uh, you know, this industry faces a lot of clearance issues. Normal times, it needed only maybe a hospital discharge summary and a clearance from the aviation regu uh, regulator. But in these times, the clearance uh, also has uh, become uh, big and there's a delay process. Uh, recently, uh, Ministry of Aviation also stated that it needs permission from the government. Uh, now, airport authorities also have their own doctors to take advice from before uh, it takes off. And many other uh, uh, local, uh, I would say, clearances which are required. What role would the BA play in this or your associate in the city would play? What role would be played uh, by the company or what support to a patient, you know, because he's busy doing uh, a lot many other things. Do you see participating in these two? Uh, because some companies uh, would take care of uh, the local uh, authority clearance and, and while uh, service providers like you would take clearance from the other authorities. Where do you see uh, your role and the role of a uh, associate in the local city coming in? No, we are always getting a priority. Being it's a air ambulance, for all the clearances, it's we are always getting it on a topmost priorities. 
so uh, we don't see uh, much of hindrance as far as the getting approvals or uh, permissions from uh, uh, local airports we are operating uh, 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 we are uh, uh, transporting patient from really really uh, small towns so uh, we are not facing uh, a, any issue in getting approvals we operators are also in talk with the uh, uh, government that this should be a really really um, you know a flawless or a easy process to obtain the permission and to operate the medical flights and very soon the policy will be in place also just to add uh, sonia uh, you know in a, in a, in a normal scenario uh, air ambulance service is always given a, a a top priority so even the takeoffs and landings have an uh, you know they are on first priority all other aircrafts would stop so there is a protocol that is followed for all air ambulance services so yeah so that's may have full arvind ji yeah. any question that you want to pick up you know i think we have we have tried to cover as many as possible and we are also running out of time any important okay. question arvind ji pandraji that you think you want to pick up uh, from the chat room uh, uh, we can otherwise uh, i have one question and i think uh, let me ask this and this is been asked by people so when is this uh, deposit which you take gets refunded back to the franchisee the moment they decide that we are not working together the uh, within a three working days the money will be transferred to them okay so what we will do with their money technically for all our audience uh, who's looking to invest their only technical investment is 2 lakh rupees as a, as a entire thing and even if they are able to do maybe three four referrals and i think they cover their money and they are not at risk so it's a good uh, situation because at this stage everybody is very calculative especially what the times going on everybody likes low cost franchises everybody wants to get into business which doesn't have a lot of uh, opex you know so there is not running cost rentals employees and things like that but they also want to cover risk so it's a low risk model uh, the only thing you need to do is the first three to four months five months build your relationship in the market so that you start getting business and getting good references and so on so very helpful now i think we have already run out of time and there are still questions pouring in i have particularly answered a lot of them but uh, still i think uh, uh, almost all markets we have got interest uh, uh, everybody is written from i think uh, uh, across uh, from punjab to uh, uh, calcutta to bihar uh, i've seen jharkhand and a lot of uh, western regions south is almost all cities where people have been. i think there is also somebody is asked if lucknow and kanpur would be collective because they are like twin cities uh, mm -hmm. can be covered from uh, uh, these which i have taken a liberty to say yes it can be clubbed because they are the kind of a twin cities so so i understand uh, your point that you don't you are not in the business of actually just making franchise you creating your own uh, direct distribution so people have better service they are they are not dealing with uh, you know these so to say uh, unauthorized uh, travel agents who misguide people take money and and don't uh, and the overall confidence of a patient especially at that moment when he is on the biggest need and he needs you know, of speed of service and also needs high quality uh, and at that time if somebody is cheated is he feels even more uh, let down so so it's a it's a big cause and it's a good work uh, you all are doing so before we close our discussion the final word from all of you and sonia Mandar ji, you want to say something? Uh, your final words for our audience? Uh, see, we we have a very strong conviction uh, on this business model. Uh, see, we decided uh, to come into this field when uh, Uttarakhand disaster uh, happened, and we came to know that there is no one there, uh, okay, who is available with helicopters, aircraft, or anything. And then we took a call that we must uh, venture into it, and we are putting all our efforts. and i'm i'm damn confident that our franchisee partners investors they are going to earn a lot uh, for this service a lot of demand is there so yeah those who are really willing to join they are they are um, welcome they are really welcome thank you and thanks thanks a lot for uh, your thank you very much it was very very delight arvin and uh, yeah. dr abhay you've been very quiet <laughs> you want to say something dr abhay go ahead no i just assure that it will be a very genuine service as manda said we are working on conviction 
and we'll serve the humanity we'll try to save our people because a lot of people are coming from all over the world to india to mumbai especially to take good treatment so we want our people from our country to come to mumbai and take a better treatment the best treatment rather very good very good thought and i think that's what we should do actually we yeah. known for good service yeah uh, arvind uh, your yes uh, i think mandar uh, summed it up very well um, and uh, i think i i, I have uh, presented the entire uh, proposal and the concept uh, most of i mean all the uh, franchise partners who or uh, you know prospective uh, for, uh, franchise partners who are watching this uh, session um, trust me this is this is a unique proposition uh, first time in india uh, in a very different way in a very aggressive way uh, and there is a long long way to go uh, in terms of you know uh, making a footprint across the country and that's where we that, you know uh, our objective and that's where we want to reach and uh, collectively let's make this happen and uh, i'm sure it will benefit all of you and the general community a lot and it's for for humanity it's 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 a, it's a, it's a great work uh, through this service that we'll be offering to every uh, possible citizen in need uh, in the country so thank you uh, you know uh, for for uh, watching this session and uh, for your for your great support thank you thank you sonia thank you thank you so much mandar ji arvind ji and dr abhay uh, uh, this has been a very informative session for all our people and i see a lot of interest which have come from the city that you wanted to come i feel the india uh, air ambulance uh, uh, service has come of age and the ems sector which is the emergency medical services and all significantly over the last uh, decade so to say owing to the efforts uh, from the government improved infrastructure and more uh, because of players like you who have come forward to make uh, the patient uh, experience uh, worth a while so we wish you all the best uh, and look forward to uh, having you uh, spread your wings across uh, the country with 500 uh, kilometers of distance uh, which is your aim to get in thank you so much thank you very much thanks for your lovely panel and very good uh, description i think it will has added a lot of confidence understanding to our investors uh, but we always <coughs> post this webinar a uh, lot of our investors which has actually pouring in interest from all the markets uh, should spend now one on one time with you uh, so arvin we would like to take your time uh, our team could coordinate and and start organizing little bit one on one discussion because every city is a unique opportunity every city would like to know and also people would like to know how they can start what training and especially these times because we are we are all working and connected to digitally uh, how how this can start right away if somebody wants to just start a business uh, right away how you can facilitate how you can train them how you can get them going quickly uh, so our teams would get in touch with you today itself we'll reach out to all our or our uh, and uh, hopefully we will work for franchise india would continue to work with you to help you expand in the markets uh, wherever you want to go uh, archana final word from your side so thank you so much friends and families who have joined us we got uh, 72 queries uh, as uh, rightly said by gaurav sir it's still pouring thank you so much amandar ji thank you so much dr abhay thank you so much arvind ji for taking out time and uh, uh, sparing your and giving us the understanding as rightly said by dr abey you are actually doing a great job for humanity thank you so much gaurav sir sonia ma'am uh, uh, it's been so many days you are sharing your time and experience with all of us uh, uh, so uh, with this note i have just written a chat uh, like contact details where you can contact us after this call as rightly said by gaurav sir we'll try to have one to one on one call with each one of you still uh, you can write back to us i've shared my colleagues detail with you you can either contact me dheeraj or kanika at our respective uh, email id uh, here's the detail for gaurav sir and sonia ma'am if they if you uh, guys like to contact them on a linkedin here is the slide i would uh, just request dheeraj to give us a uh, information about the webinar which is coming tomorrow yeah so this is a, a, a webinar which we are doing on monday Uh, so we have again a great uh, brand coming for each one of you that's uh, a, a plus prime consulting india's first growing leadership training company we look forward to have you on monday and uh, tomorrow uh, we be requested gorav sir to have a interaction uh, it's a great session everybody should attend this where gorav sir is directly talking to each one of you related to master franchise gorav sir i would request if you can just uh, share a few 
lines I am, for I'm this level up. Question for a lot of people who are looking to buy a master franchise for a global brand. Uh, we have a lot of global brands uh, which are now uh, available for the market of India, especially brands which would do well post COVID. So I'm sharing my thoughts and sharing about six different brands uh, with the audience. If anybody wants to join, 12 o'clock Sunday tomorrow, uh, that's the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gaurav sir. Uh, thanks everyone uh, once again for joining us. Look forward to have a great day ahead. Best wishes. Stay safe. Uh, take good care of your health and your family. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.